we've been building circuits and filters for a few labs now, and I haven't given you a great way of figuring out exactly how to decide what R's and C's to use when you do your filter design. One reason for that is that it's usually a guess and check method, but we can do a little bit better than just blindly plugging in resistors and capacitors. We can do some circuit simulation. So in this video, we will talk about the tool LT Spice, which is kind of an old program, but a nice little circuit simulator. Uh, I'll be doing this in Windows. If you're doing this on Mac, you'll probably see a slightly different interface, and it would be helpful to use uh, what they call hotkeys. This is an older style program where uh, rather than use your mouse for everything, they, they want to uh, have you know key presses that do special events. So here is um, uh, a PDF I found. If you just Google LT Spice hotkey PDF, you'll come up with all these kinds of things. But uh, usually we'll be working on a schematic. So this um, uh, orangish color here, and it shows you all the keys you can press to make certain things happen. Uh, the Windows one tends to have buttons to click, so I might not use these in the video, but if you're on Mac, sometimes they don't show up. So for instance, if you want to draw a resistor, you type, you press the letter R on your keyboard. Your mouse will then turn into a resistor and in anywhere you click, you'll drop a resistor. Same thing for capacitor. And then to stop drawing them, you would press escape. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll describe how to use those as we go uh, making some circuits. So uh, download and install LT Spice. And the first thing we're going to do is we'll just make a simple low pass filter and uh, I'll show you how to do the simulation. And then we'll do a slightly more complicated circuit with an op amp. And then from there you can design all of your filters and op amp circuits. So we'll go to uh, new schematic and uh, we get this blank gray page. And what we wanna do is we wanna draw a resistor and a capacitor in series. So up at the top of the screen, we've got um, these uh, symbols for what we wanna do. So this is kind of like a CAD program um, an old style CAD program. So I'll, I'll press the resistor button. Uh, my mouse turns into resistor, and then if I click, I drop a resistor. And then if I press the escape key on my keyboard, I get my mouse back. Um, if I wanted to move that resistor, I would go to the move hand button, and then I could click on it and move it. And I can hit escape to get my mouse back. If I want to give this resistor a value, I'll right click on it, um, and I can type in a thousand to get a uh, kilo ohm. Or I could also type in 1K, and then it knows that that's a 1,000 ohm resistor. Um, if you're on a Mac, rather than right-click, this would be a two-finger click. OK, then I want to add a capacitor. Put my capacitor there, and escape to get my mouse back. And I'll right-click on it, and I'll give it a, a one microfarad value. Um, so I'm going to have a voltage source come into the resistor, and then uh, have it go to the capacitor, go to ground. So I need to add a ground, so there's a ground button ground and I need to connect this with wire so I'll grab the wire tool and anywhere there's a blue box that's a node that you can click on so I can connect that node to that node so the last thing I need is I need to say what is the voltage that's going into uh, the circuit um, that is going to be in the uh, component library so you click the component button and uh, we get this um, library of parts that we can add. And all the way on the right is one that says voltage. And it looks more like a traditional voltage source you've, you've probably seen like taking physics, um, like a battery that has a plus and a minus sign. So I'll drop one of those. And we have to make sure that the negative side of it goes to ground. So I can either draw another ground um, because all the grounds are the same, or I could use a wire to connect this one to the same ground. And I will put the uh, positive side of the voltage onto my resistor. Um, so what we're going to do here is a voltage, a, a uh, AC analysis. So I want to tell this voltage source that it's going to be a sine wave, and the software is going to uh, keep the amplitude of the sine wave at a constant one volt um, as it changes the frequency. And every time it changes the frequency, it's going to see what is the amplitude of the voltage um, at every point. Also, every current, if we're interested, uh, as it sweeps from one voltage to another volt, uh, one frequency to another frequency. So I need to tell this voltage source uh, to have a constant one volt amplitude. So I'm going to right click on it and say advanced. And in the small signal AC analysis, AC amplitude, I'm going to say one. And then this AC one should pop up there. Now, the last thing I have to do, because uh, LT Spice can do many kinds of simulations, is 
uh, write the simulation code. So we go to um, simulate, edit simulation command. And here are all the different kinds of simulations that we can do. We're interested this time in an AC analysis. So we'll go to AC analysis. And we're going to choose a sweep. So the sweep means, um, uh, should we do a linear sweep uh, of uh, as we're changing the uh, frequency of the signal? Should we go from 1 hertz to 2 hertz to 3 hertz? Or a decade sweep, meaning should we go on like a log scale? So we'll do a decade sweep. And then we get to choose how many data points will it simulate per decade. Uh, and a good number is 100. So that means 100 data points for every factor of 10 in frequency. The more you do, the slower the command runs, but maybe the finer the resolution you have. So 100 is good. And then we would say, what's the start frequency and the end frequency? So I'm going to simulate this from 1 hertz to 10 kilohertz. I'll say OK, and then I'll drop this somewhere. And this is now a circuit that's ready to be simulated. So we have to make sure that the under the voltage 1, it says AC1. And we've got this uh, line of text here that says dot AC in a decade, 100 data points per decade, starting at 1 hertz, going to 10 kilohertz. So then we could say simulate run. And now my cursor on the schematic side, anywhere I click, I will get to see uh, what that voltage does, the amplitude on the y-axis, and the frequency on the x-axis. So I can select the junction between the resistor and the capacitor. And here we see a solid black line. That represents the magnitude of the voltage that comes out at that point relative to the input frequency. And then we also get to see the phase. So the phase shifts as well. Now we're not going to really talk about how the phase shifts during our labs, so we can turn that off. You can right click on this uh, right side y axis and say don't plot the phase. We don't need that. And now we see a uh, decibel scale on the left and a log scale um, on the x axis. We could play around with that if we want. We can change um, this decibel axis back to linear if you right click on it and go to linear. And if you want a linear, linear plot, you can uh, right click the x axis and uncheck logarithmic. So here's exactly what happens to uh, different sine waves as they enter this um, uh, low pass filter. Anything that has a very low frequency, uh, the input is 1 volt, so the output is also 1 volt. So low frequencies are kept. And we can see that there's a pretty steep drop off that by the time you get to whatever this point is, like 500 hertz, only 30% of the voltage is coming out. Um, so that's why we call this a low pass filter, right? It's keeping, it's passing low frequencies, and it's attenuating or decreasing high frequencies. Um, it looks, uh, I don't know, what do you want to say, sharp, meaning that uh, if we wanted to keep exactly in the 10 hertz range, this filter would keep all the stuff in 10 hertz. And then between, you know, 10 hertz and 1,000 hertz, well, you know, a bunch of it is getting attenuated. And then above kilohertz, everything's like only less than 10 percent is coming back out again. Um, so depending on what you're doing, you might want a, a decibel linear scale. You might want a log-log scale. So just pay attention in the lab sheet um, for whatever I ask for. Now, if we wanted to plot two things at the same time, I could click another point. So I can click, say, I don't know, this point up here. We don't have many interesting signals here. So my first thing that I clicked is still in black. The second thing I clicked is in blue. Uh, the colors on, on your uh, screen might be a little different, um, depending on what your default color system is. Uh, but you can see the, the voltage up here, which is our input voltage, is 0 dB, meaning uh, 1 volt comes in, 1 volt goes out across every single frequency. So that's our input. And then here's our output. We can see the attenuation. And this is probably something like a, what we call a 160 hertz filter. If we did one over two pi RC. Uh, I think we also click our components and those will show us what the currents look like. So here's what the current through the resistor looks like. And here's what the current through the capacitor looks like. Of course, it's the same. They're right on top of each other because they're in series. Um, what else can we do? We can click on ground. It doesn't let us click on ground because ground is not interesting. So, uh, oh, we can also see the current that comes out, which is the same as the current through the resistor and the capacitor. All the currents are the same. All the components are in series. So that's as much as we can see on this, um, this circuit. So to stop the simulation running, I can uh, just close that window. So let's add a 
op amp to the circuit just so I can show you how to add an op amp. Um, we're going to go to the component library and there's a folder called op amps. So we'll open up op amps. And so this uh, software package, LT Spice, is maintained by a hardware company called Analog uh, Devices. So we'll see that they have specific parameters um, in Analog Bar LT for um, specific op amps that they sell. And so some op these op amps are not ideal. So um, the different op amps have different parameters on how well they operate as op amps. So you can actually simulate for your spe specific op amp how well it would do. We want more of an ideal case. So if you scroll all the way to the right, we're going to be using the universal op amp 2. This is just a generic um, you know, ideal op amp. So we'll click to place that. We'll escape. And let's build an amplifier with, I don't know, a gain of 10. So I'll add two resistors and a ground. And I'll use my wire tool to connect this in a non-inverting amplifier. And I'll take the voltage from my low pass filter and use it as the input to the non-inverting amplifier. And you can see we can have uh, crossing lines here. As long as there's no big blue dot, that means those are they're just crossing, they're not touching. So the only annoying thing here about using the op amps is if I simulate this right now, it wouldn't work at all because the op amp hasn't been given any power. So now we have to add two more power supplies with fixed five and negative five volt voltages so this op amp has power. So I'll go back to the component library and I'll go back up one uh, by clicking the double dots in the top left. And I'll go add two more voltage supplies. And each one gets a ground. I'll wire their grounds and wire the positive one to the positive side of the op amp and the negative one to the negative side of the op amp. And I need to tell them that this is a uh, five volt source and this is a negative five volt source. If I don't do this, the simulation will not be correct. I'll make something like a, I don't know, a 1K and 100 ohms for a gain of 10. And now I can run my simulation again. So we could double check that uh, the input to everything is flat at uh, 0 dB across all frequencies. The low pass filter um, attenuates at something like 160 hertz. And then the output of the op amp is the exact same curve and it's up by, uh, looks like 20 dB, because 20 dB is a factor of 10. And we can take off uh, the phases, and we can maybe look at this in a linear scale. So we can see what happens to our voltage at the output, um, the one volt sine waves uh, zero hertz uh, come out at 11 volts because this is technically a gain of 11. Um, and then anything above, say, a kilohertz has been attenuated. So that's how to use LT Spice. The main things you should uh, keep in mind when you do this always use universal op amp 2 for op amps. Remember to hook up the plus and the minus of the op amps to uh, voltage sources with 5 volts and negative 5 volts. And if a wire is missing, um, say by accident, say we use the uh, delete button to delete a wire and run simulate, you'll get an error. So you can go through and check all of these. It does some minor error checking.